Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. It is quite cold today. 10 below last night, 10 above in the sun today with a stiff wind. You can tell how cold it is by the crunch of the snow underfoot. It's crunchy today. Howdy, pigs. What are you guys up to this morning? You're keeping warm in a pile. That's a good idea. Where are you guys going? Oh, why you run away from me? Oh, can't forget him. Calf, meet pigs. I happen to think that you guys aren't so scared of me. They run away and then they come up to me. Are these guys afraid of me or are they not? I don't know, pigs. You guys look like you're doing all right in the cold weather. When I was an architect, I had occasion to think of fear quite a bit. Architecture is a liability-ridden business. We're dealing with a lot of money. And I had a partner, actually the senior partner at the firm, who was very fearful. What I was about in architecture were trying new things, trying new building systems that functioned more efficiently and used less resources. And he was afraid of trying things that hadn't been done before, but I wasn't. And why wasn't I afraid of doing those things? Because I covered all my bases. I had my crap wired tight, so to speak. If I tried something new, you can bet I did the research to give myself confidence that what I was trying would work. Fear is such a basic component of the world these days. As the rate of change increases, the uncertainty about the future increases, and Fear is deeply related to rate of change. Plus, if you listen to the news, if you listen to politics, we're being told to fear just about everything out there. And so, how do I deal with this? I, I'm not a fearful person. I don't operate out of a position of fear. And that's what this video is about. Fear is a motivator and a disabler. It truly is a poor motivator. Fear tinges our decision making in twisted ways. Fear sometimes freezes us into inaction, fearful we will make the wrong decision and make things worse. Operating from and making decisions from a feeling of fear can be an awful way to live your life. It's a continual state of stress. Fear makes us feel powerless and reactive instead of living the life we want, happy and free. I don't have much fear in my life, and here's some strategies that I use to minimize fear. First of all, being informed and having the right information is the real antidote to fear. And when I talk about having the real information, I'm talking about science. I'm talking about history. I'm not talking about the news. I'm not talking about rumor. I'm not talking about what other people think. It's getting straight to the source and having confidence that you know the underlying principles behind whatever that rumor, that snooze, that political story is. Human experience is another antidote to fear. And what do I mean by human experience? It's an experience with people from all different walks of life, different backgrounds, different cultures, different viewpoints, and understanding that through all that, people are people. And the crazy conspiracy stuff I read about depends, almost always, on large groups of people acting in concert in strange ways, in kind of unbelievable ways, in ways that I have never seen people behave in my life. I've known and worked with white collar, blue collar, public boards, communities, all kinds of organizations and people of different backgrounds, ethnicities, nationalities, and observe the dynamics of all these interactions. And being human is at the core of each of these. People are just people often acting in their self-interest as well as the interest of the larger group brings everything back down to earth. Fear is often caused by a feeling of powerlessness, lack of control over what's happening around you, and 
That's one of the reasons that we started our farm back up. My wife and I wanted that independence that comes with being more self-sufficient and along with it comes with minimizing the fear of what's going on out there. Fear is often related to worrying about what another person or group of people may do. I can't control other people, so I make it a rule to minimize my and my family's dependence on others. The more I can do myself, or the more my family can do ourselves, the less fear we have about what's going on with other people in the world at large. <laughs> yeah. Having a strong rudder of your own making is one key to making it through life, avoiding fear's rocky shores. And right now, my rudder's telling me I should go inside. It's too cold. Huh. It's better in here. A principle that I use in creating that rudder, which I kind of stumbled on and then realized I was using something that had already been established a long time ago, something called Occam's Razor, and it's named after a Franciscan monk named William of Occam in England. And this was 750 years ago. He came up with this hypothesis, which has proven to work extremely well in my life. Occam's Razor is also known as the law of parsimony, or the law of economy. And it states that plurality should not be posited without necessity. Now, that may sign, sound like a lot of gobbledygook, but Basically what it says is if you have a solution that has a lot of moving parts versus a solution that has few moving parts, and we can call them entities, and I'm putting it in a mechanical perspective, but it falls into all kinds of perspectives. Basically the simpler solution with less moving parts is the more likely. And so when you come into something like these conspiracy theories I keep talking about, conspiracy theories have a whole lot of moving parts and it becomes almost irrational to think that all those parts are acting in concert to achieve this one unlikely goal. And the same thing applies to me on the farm. When I'm working on a task, I always look for the simplest solution with the least moving parts that requires the least maintenance and least kind of brain power for me to keep going. It's a way to evaluate differing recommendations, differing systems, differing ways of approaching things to keep things simple and trouble free and also to evaluate how likely any given story is that you hear that you're kind of skeptical about. I can't express how foundational this viewpoint is to the way I approach life. It touches everything I do. It, along with my understanding of human dynamics, given my interactions with people and groups over my lifetime, governs how I evaluate conspiracy theories and find the most likely cause of the matter. I employ a simpler definition of Occam's razor every day on the farm, which I paraphrase as, given two alternate solutions to a problem, the simpler one is usually the best. This is the one with less complication, fewer parts, and fewer systems to maintain over time. Often people reduce Occam's razor to KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, or keep it simple, stupid. It's not quite the same, but you know, it's close enough in my book. Now, specifically regarding fear of trying new things, remember my story in the beginning with my partner who was afraid of new things. I do all kinds of new things all the time. I mean, renovate a house, rebuild a tractor, take apart a clock, do this, do that. I'm not afraid of learning new things or trying new things. And the reason for that is, is I'd recommend the same for you, is to go in prepared. Read the technical manuals. I know they're boring. Go to the discussion forums online. Look at the YouTube videos. Go in, as I say, with your crap wired tight and know the territory it's really not hard to learn new things if you do that. If, you, if that preparedness gives you confidence to know I'm going to get through this thing that I'm starting. First time I tore apart a tractor, I looked at all the pieces of the floor. I said, how in heck am I going to put this all together? And then I realized it's all in the books. Look at these cows standing out here. They don't care if the wind is blowing and it's 10 degrees out. You guys are just hanging out back here. I think they like the sun. I'm standing in the sun too, but 
doesn't make me feel very warm. The more times you try something new and you succeed at it, the more confident you go into each other endeavor. And I started with the biggest one, the house. That was huge. And when I was done with that, I said, you know what? I can figure out anything. Don't be a slave to fear. Fear makes us irrational. We don't make the right decisions if we only take our fear into account. We have to make decisions based on the hope of achieving something better than what exists. A world created from a place of fear is a very bad place in which to live. Don't believe me? Take a look around. It's the world that's being created now. What, Ezra? Come here. A common fear which seems to rise and fall depending on lots of different things is fear of the other, fear of the different, fear of the person that's not like you. I don't know. Where I grew up here, small town, pretty homogenous, people all pretty much the same. When I went off to college, when I went into the working world, I met people from all over the world, worked with them, different cultures, different skin colors, and I found that people are just the same no matter how they look or where they're from. They care about the same things at the core, taking care of themselves, taking care of the family, hopefully making the world a better place, making a living. We have more in common than we do different, and stressing those commonalities is the way to remove that fear of somebody who's just from a different place or a different race than you. Yes, isn't that right, Ezra? You're quite a bit different than me. We get along all right, don't we? I pet, you purr. Mutually beneficial. Yeah, okay. Turns out that Ezra was yelling at me because he wanted a midday snack. I would like to say I'm not afraid of anything, but like everyone, I'm afraid of some things. I'm, I'm afraid of my wife when she gets mad. <laughs> I am afraid of death. I think that's probably cited as the number one motivator, fear of death, right? To get people off their butts. I'm not as afraid of death as I used to be. I'm more afraid of what happens as a consequence of death, family, how they get along. Those sorts of things. I think I hear that the brownies are almost done. Oh. Baking on a cold day is always a good idea. The oven warms up the house. And I'm supposed to wait till these cool down, but that's not happening. There's two things that really worry me hmm. and that I fear. And like a lot of people's fear, it's based on other people. I'm afraid of two types of people, I guess. Those who live according to dogma, and those who are narrow-minded. The folks who are slaves to dogma, you can call dogma fen fundamentalism, but I don't like to use that word because it has so many religious connotations. <sighs> These are folks that place all of their belief in another authority who's telling them this is the way things are and they've lost the ability to kind of improvise or think for themselves on what the right thing to do is situationally. So they just rely on some other written or spoken or authoritative source for the reason for their actions. That scares me. The second type is narrow-minded and I realize that the the world is full of people with different distances of focus. So um, I would say that a very specialized person has a very close range of focus. They're used to working on something that's fairly small and right in front of them figuratively. A person that has a wide range of focus has a view of a bigger picture, a, long, a longer range of focus and can see more how things fit together. There's a place for each type of person. What I worry is that those who are specifically focused on one small part of a big picture 
are having too much of a say in how the world works versus those who can see how all the pieces fit together. I had to work with some fairly narrow-minded people in my old job and I found that I almost scorned the bigger picture and put all the emphasis on what they were specializing in, like that was the most important thing to the exclusion of everything else and that scares me. So like anybody else, I mean it's types of people that scare me and it's the reason that I feel some measure of safety on the farm over what I would living in a city or dependent on a lot of other people because my greatest fear beyond these two specific types of people is that these two types of people will wind up controlling how the future goes. The dogmatic and the narrow-minded and that's a scary world in my book and I'm glad that I can put some distance between my family and that. You know the swordfish has no natural predators to fear from. I guess swordfish are the exception. We all have our own fears. Oh, wait a second. It's rumored that the penfish is mightier than the swordfish so check that off. I like to do these videos once in a while because I think about these things and I like to share them with you in the hopes that they'll be somewhat useful. You can take them or leave them. <laughs> I'm just conveying what I've learned through life and I like to add them to the channel's mix once in a while when I'm in the mood. I will be back out on the farm taking care of the animals, working on the MD in the next videos. For now, I'm staying inside where it's warm. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.